All right, guys, we're back staring at my engine bay. And in this video, we're going to talk about intake air temperature or IATs for short. Now, this is something that a lot of people have been asking me about lately because we're getting to the middle of summer. So your IATs are getting higher naturally because the temperatures outside are getting hotter. So there's always the question about how to know if IATs are too hot or how to know it's something that needs to be addressed. And if it is a problem, what's the best thing that you can do to fix it? So we'll go ahead and talk about that now. Now, the first thing to consider is how your temperature is measured. And there are three different points that you can measure temperature on your car as far as what's coming through your intake. So on the stock intake, you will have a math sensor coming off of the intake box. And that sensor measures airflow, but it also measures temperature. So you can actually see what the temperature is coming in from outside before it goes into the turbo. Then we also have a second temperature sensor right here, and this measures temperature coming out of the turbo, but before it goes into the intercooler. So this is a good way to know just how hot the temperatures are coming out of the turbo, but it's not something that necessarily correlates directly to temperatures that you're going to see in the engine. So when you're looking at your logs, temperature from this sensor will typically be called charge air temperature, and that's how you know that you're looking at temperatures before the intercooler and those aren't actually IATs. That's the temperature coming out of the turbo before it goes into the intercooler. Then after that, we have a third sensor that's up here. And this sensor measures pressure, but it also measures temperature as well. And your intercooler is in this intake manifold. So after it goes through the intercooler and gets cooled down, you'll get a final temperature reading. And this is your actual intake air temp. And this reading is the most important because this is measuring the temperature of the air right before it goes into your combustion chamber. Now, usually I tell people that our intercooler is extremely efficient. And when you look at the data from your logs, you can see that yourself. You'll see that once the air goes through the turbo, it typically gets heated up to 150, maybe even 200 plus degrees over ambient. And then once it goes to the intercooler, it gets dropped right back down another 100 plus degrees before it goes into your engine. So for such a small unit, it's actually extremely efficient and it does a significant amount of cooling in such a short amount of space. But like any other turbo car, there's always an instance where your IATs can be too hot. So the first point that you should be looking at are your peak IATs. And with the factory DME settings, it will begin to pull power at 65 degrees Celsius or 149 degrees Fahrenheit. So if you're seeing temperatures on your IATs get hotter than that, you will typically see your boost pressure drop, your timing will drop, and the car will basically go into a protection mode to limit how much power the engine is making. Because when it sees that high of an intake temp, it considers that to be dangerous and something that can cause damage to the engine if you push it too hard. Now this is not something that I typically see. Even people where it's you know 100, 110 degrees Fahrenheit outside, are not typically experiencing temps that go over 150 Fahrenheit. So if that's an issue that you're having, I highly suggest scanning for codes to see if anything else is wrong, or you can just manually check the reservoir for your intercooler system. Usually if I see people having temps spike up like that and losing a significant amount of power, it's because they have a coolant leak somewhere and losing that coolant is reducing the efficiency of your intercooler and that's what's causing your IATs to go up. Now, if you're seeing a significant amount of torque reduction in your tune before getting to that point, again, scan for codes just to make sure that nothing else is wrong. But if you're 100% sure that it's linked to IATs, then that's something that's being manipulated in your tuning software. So I'd recommend talking to your tuner to see what you guys can do about it. Some tuners add additional protection at a lower threshold just to protect the engine as you're adding more boost and adding more power. But if that's something that you feel like is safe, then you and your tuner can agree to raise those limits so that you can continue pushing the car when it's hotter outside. Now, another thing to consider is how long your IAT stay elevated. And when people talk about heat soak, a lot of times they're not actually seeing it in their logs. Just because temps go up doesn't mean that you're experiencing heat soak. Heat soak happens when your temps don't come down in an expected amount of time. So if your temps go up, and then while you're driving, they don't drop back down after the end of your pull. That is a good indication that you're experiencing heat soak. So that's a good point where IETs need to be addressed because your system is overwhelmed and just literally cannot absorb any more heat 
from your intake charge. All right, so now that you've figured out whether your IATs are actually a problem, we can talk about what to do about it. And again, typically it's not an issue, but no matter what, reducing your IATs is always better and safer for the engine. So even if you're not experiencing these issues, these are some ways that you can reduce your IATs to further improve the reliability and consistency of your engine. So the first thing that people typically look for is a heat exchanger upgrade. And I actually have a CSF heat exchanger installed on my car. I did a full install DIY as well as a review of the improvements that came from it. So feel free to check that video out if you want to see all the details. But the main takeaway from that should be that it will help reduce the chance of heat soak and it will help your IETs drop down more quickly after a pull. So I didn't see a significant reduction in the increase in IETs during a pull. It dropped about like five degrees over a third and fourth gear pull with everything that I did. But the significant improvement that I saw was after I came off of the throttle, temps dropped down really quickly. So if you're going to be doing a lot of back-to-back -back pulls, doing like road course duty, you know, where you're going to be on the throttle on and off a lot, it will help ensure that you're not running into a heat soak issue because it gives you that additional cooling capacity in the system so that it can continue to keep pushing the car and keep reducing your IATs. So that's something that if you're just running into high temps, I don't know that that would necessarily fix it, but it will help decrease the amount of time your car needs to recover after a pull. Now, the other thing that a lot of people are doing is literally just putting ice in your intercooler tank or ice on top of your intake manifold. Now, this is something that can actually drop your IATs. But if you're going to be doing a lot of drag racing or roll racing where you're sitting between runs, you're going to see your intake air temps spike while the car is parked. So putting ice on your intake manifold will help keep those temps down while you're not having any airflow over your heat exchanger. And that way, when you leave the pits and get back onto the strip to do your run, you're giving your car the best opportunity to have the lowest IATs possible. So just bring some packs of ice, put it on your intake manifold between runs, and that'll help keep things cool. Another thing that people ask me about is max cooling mode. Again, I didn't see a significant reduction in IATs when using it, but it does give you the best opportunity to have the lowest IATs possible. So if you're in an environment where you're going to be seeing a lot of stresses and high temps, turning it on should help. Now, the way that the max cooling mode works is it basically adjusts the DME's logic for how it ramps up the duty cycle on your water pump. So before it had a threshold where, you know, a certain amount of throttle and a certain amount of temperature over ambient would cause it to kick in and ramp up to its max speed. And with max cooling mode, it drops those requirements down. So it turns on at a higher speed more often. So you're always pushing coolant through the system and flowing as much as possible to give you the best opportunity to have the lowest IETs. So it will give you the most reliability and consistency, but again, it's not a change that in my testing showed a significant drop in IATs or a significant improvement in performance. Now, really the big change that's come out now and what a lot of people are doing is upgrading their intake manifold. And because our intercooler is in the intake manifold, you're basically upgrading the intercooler as well. Now, this is by far the best upgrade that you can do for all around performance, whether you're drag racing, road racing, autocross or daily driving it will give you the biggest drop in IATs and the most consistency with back-to-back -back pulls. The biggest drawback is the price, but if that's really an issue that you're running into and you're being competitive and trying to set really good times, nothing will be an intercooler upgrade. I've seen a lot of testing with them, and in general, they work extremely well. Some of them actually continue to drop IATs throughout your pull. So as more airflow goes over the heat exchanger, it's actually dropping your IATs further which is insane. That's an incredible performance benefit. So I highly, highly recommend that if it's really something that you need. And like I said, you're competitive and doing everything you can to get your times. Nothing will be an intercooler upgrade by replacing your intake manifold. Another option that works pretty well for cooling is water injection. And we don't have a lot of data on this because not a lot of people use it, but it is an extremely robust option for cooling off your intake temps. Now, I know we've talked about spraying charge pipe meth and how dangerous it can be. And I would never, ever recommend spraying meth in your charge pipe. Even if it's a small nozzle and you're saying that you're just using it for cooling, it is going to affect your fuel trims and it's going to affect the fuel distribution across your cylinders. But if you only spray water, 
it will not affect your fueling, and it will provide more cooling than your meth would. The way that water injection works is you spray the water into the intake charge and it evaporates. And in the process of evaporating, it's actually taking out the heat from your intake charge. So when you spray water, it works more effective than meth, E85, anything else that you could spray in there because the way that the water evaporates will cool off the intake charge better and it won't affect your fuel distribution across the cylinders. Now, unfortunately on our cars, we can't spray it after the intercooler because there's not enough space between the intercooler and the engine for the water to evaporate. But in other scenarios, you can actually spray the water after the intercooler, after it's done all of its cooling for you, and then use the water to further reduce the temps. Sometimes you can even drop it below ambient temperature. So water injection is extremely efficient and it's a really good way to drop your intake temps. Also considering the fact that it's something BMW implemented from the factory, I would recommend it if it's something that you're comfortable with setting up and dialing in your controllers and all of that, it'll work really well. So hopefully this video helps explain how IATs work and what you can do to address it. Again, typically I don't recommend spending a lot of money trying to reduce your intake temps because it doesn't net a significant performance benefit. But if you are one of those people that are using your car competitively, really beating on it, or you know your temperatures are actually going over those thresholds, those are some of the options that you can use to improve your intercooler's efficiency. So thanks for watching, and thanks again to all of the partners that are helping me out with my build. All of them are listed down in the description. So if you're looking for anybody to help you out with dyno time, performance mods, you know, interior, exterior, anything like that for your car, definitely check them out and let them know I sent you. And remember, the more that you support them, the more that they support me, and the more videos that we can continue to make trying out different things. So thanks again for watching, and if you have any other questions or comments, leave them down below.